Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Lindgren. A man charged with a February 2021 murder in Elmira has been convicted. The March jobs report is out and numbers show our economy is continuing to recover. American businesses added 431,000 jobs in March. The unemployment rate declined to 3.6 percent. Some of the areas that saw the most job growth are in the leisure and hospitality sector, professional and business services, retail and manufacturing, according to government statistics. The Elmira Police Department has adopted their new department flag. They chose to unveil the flag today to mark the 146th anniversary of the department's founding. In a statement, Chief Anthony Alvernaz says the flag is a model after the U.S. flag and New York City's police department flags. The flag will officially be raised for the first time on Memorial Day at Weisner Park during the annual Memorial Day Parade. The March jobs report is out and numbers show our economy is continuing to recover. American businesses added 431,000 jobs in March. The unemployment rate declined to 3.6 percent. Some of the areas that saw the most job growth are in the leisure and hospitality sector, professional and business services, retail and manufacturing, according to government statistics. The Pentagon is now bracing for a long war in Ukraine. Russian troops appear to be on the move, but Ukrainian forces may now be carrying out attacks across the border in Russia. Doug Luzader has the latest from Washington. The first pictures released by the Russian government show explosions at an oil depot in Russia, about 20 miles from the border with Ukraine. If this was, in fact, an attack by Ukrainian forces, it may show a bold new front in the war. A Russian convoy near Kyiv was also destroyed as Ukrainian forces are increasingly on the move. Russian forces near the Chernobyl nuclear site, meantime, have moved out amidst unverified reports that they may have suffered from radiation poisoning. There will be another round of peace talks today, but there is not much optimism, and Ukraine's supply lines could be struggling. The Pentagon dismissed reports that military aid shipments to Ukraine are being delayed. I've never seen the Department of Defense be able to move with this sense of alacrity and speed uh, as I have uh, in just the last few weeks. It could come down the better part of you know, anything from 10 cents to 35 cents a gallon. President Biden spoke of the economic costs of the war here at home, blaming Russian President Vladimir Putin for soaring gas prices and announcing the release of oil from the nation's strategic reserve. But the impact on gas prices could be minimal, and there are risks. So when you start burning your strategic reserves uh, in hopes that you, you're going to come out the other side at low price environment, that's a big bet. Let's take a look at gas prices in the twin tiers now. According to AAA, the average price per gallon in Chemung County is $4.22. That's the second cheapest in the state. Tioga County is slightly higher at $4.29, while Steuben County is higher than the state average, with prices of $4.33 per gallon. Burger King is being sued for allegedly exaggerating the size of its burgers in advertisements. The chain's Whopper-branded sandwiches, Impossible Whopper, Whopper Melts, and Basic Hamburger and Cheeseburgers all allegedly display ads for larger sandwiches than reality, according to a class action lawsuit. Burger King is being sued for breach of contract, negligent misrepresentation, and unjust enrichment claiming consumers, especially lower income ones, have been misled and been overpaying for less food than the company advertises. Billionaire Jeff Bezos launches yet another successful space tourism mission as six passengers, including a Blue Origin employee, were launched to the edge of space on board the new Shepard capsule. Casey Stiegel has more from West Texas. Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin completed yet another suborbital space launch from West Texas on Thursday. In the dock, 
The new Shepard rocket transported six passengers to the edge of space, bringing the crew 62 miles above Earth, lasting a total of 11 minutes. The flight, dubbed NS-20, was initially scheduled for Tuesday, but was scrapped due to high winds in the region. Video footage located near the launch site shows the passengers parachuting back down to the surface following their successful mission. Welcome back, Gary Line. <laughs> This is Blue Origin's 20th flight into space and its fourth with passengers. It included one of its engineers and five paying customers. The price tag for a seat on the New Shepard rocket has not been disclosed, but the company revealed they've sold nearly $100 million worth of tickets. The flight was set to include comedian Pete Davidson, but he was forced to drop out because of a scheduling conflict. Blue Origin has already transported high-profile figures into space, including star William Shatner and Good Morning America host Michael Strahan. Officials from the company say they are hopeful these rides will be commonplace in the near future. Uh, you know, today is all about where... It's not about where we're living on Earth. It's where we're going to be living in the future. Next week, SpaceX, a different company, is scheduled to take four paying customers some 200 miles above Earth to the International Space Station. Outside Van Horn, Texas, Casey Stiegel, Fox News. New data shows the U.S. is experiencing more tornadoes earlier in the year. And forecasters worry this trend will prove hazardous, with millions more Americans impacted by storms. Marianne Rafferty reports. The National Weather Service's Storm Prediction Center says the U.S. experienced more tornadoes this March than in any other March on record, with at least 219 twisters reported nationwide, more than double the average for the month, and breaking last year's record of 191 March tornadoes. While twisters aren't rare during March, tornado season usually heightens between May and June. And with two consecutive record-breaking March tornado seasons in a row, forecasters worry millions of Americans will now be exposed to more life-threatening weather in the future. As the window for these storms widens. You could hear the wind getting real howly. Many of these twisters carving huge paths of destruction across communities in the south. Southern Mississippi, the Florida Panhandle, and Central Alabama are all busy cleaning up damage from this week's round of tornadoes. With a massive EF3 tornado also slamming northwest Arkansas Wednesday, bringing catastrophic winds clocking in at around 145 miles per hour. Meanwhile, deadly tornadoes struck southeastern Louisiana and northern Texas the week before. At 75 years old and my wife's 70, how do we start over? You know, how do we find what we have left to start over with? The Storm Prediction Center first began recording tornadoes back in 1950. Since then, forecasters say warming global temperatures due to climate change are mostly to blame for the massive increase in tornadoes earlier in the year. Marianne Rafferty, Fox News. Stay with us. Meteorologist Sam Ryan has your forecast right after this. And coming up, we'll tell you how millennial women are closing the pay gap between themselves and their male peers. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Thanks again for checking in as we take a look at your local forecast. And uh, we're going to go back to March here and talk about tornadoes. And according to the NOAA Storm Prediction Center, we may have endured the most March tornadoes ever on record. The preliminary numbers coming in at more than 200 nationally. No tornadoes in New York, but we still have storm, storm surveys to complete. And uh, looking at the numbers, they may be dialed back a little bit, but very impressive month of March, no question in terms of severe weather. Uh, Saturday is looking pretty decent, 51. Saturday night, we have a little bit of a rain snow mix that could continue into Sunday at 45. Maybe some minor accumulations in terms of snowfall, but really not expecting much. This was a look at the radar and satellite picture from Friday. Again, this uh, cooler air 
pushing from uh, west to east and uh, within that some rain and snow showers. So we will be dealing with some clearing skies overnight tonight or continued clearing after that little uh, precipitation today. But temperatures will be falling into the upper 20s by the early morning hours of Saturday, maybe bottoming out at 26 in Elmira Corning, which is pretty close to where we should be for this early April. 647 is our sunrise and sunset is at 730. Three with a daytime high that is pretty typical for early April as well. So tonight, mostly cloudy, actually kind of clearing, and then it'll give way to a sunnier Saturday, a little bit warmer as well. Now, rain and snow chances develop Saturday night into Sunday, and then looking ahead to next week, we do have a more unsettled midweek time period with some rain likely. So no weather worries tonight, other than being a little bit on the cooler side. Skies will clear out a little bit more giving us a, a decent Saturday with some sunshine. Now, uh, late Saturday, the clouds will be thickening up in advance of that next system, which again will bring us some rain and snow chances into Sunday. And a few of the higher elevations could be picking up some minor accumulations Sunday, but uh, for the rest of us, looks pretty quiet in terms of that. 26 tonight, rain showers will be fading, and those winds out of the west and northwest at around 5 to 15 miles per hour. So a little chilly as we start off your Saturday. Again, some sunshine, that'll feel nice. The hourly temperature forecast gets us up into the upper 40s by the afternoon. Clouds starting to thicken up a little bit more later in the day in advance of that rain snow chance coming in Saturday night. But 51 is pretty close where we should be in early April, so we can't complain there either. Ithaca at 48, Wayland 48, Westfield 51, and Binghamton will be at 49 degrees. Uh, those uh, temperatures will be cooler on Sunday as that rain snow chance pushes on through. In fact, temperatures will be a good 10 uh, degrees or so below the average in uh, many spots. And then Monday we're at 52, still a little unsettled as we uh, head into next week. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, rain showers will be likely, and of course, we'll keep you up to date. An Oregon third grader is being hailed a hero for his quick thinking, which helped save a choking classmate's life. Spencer Thomas has the story. The gym right here at Yamhill Carlton Elementary was filled with loud cheers as third grader Taylor Snyder was commemorated for doing the Heimlich maneuver on a classmate who was choking. A little hero who took big action. Take a look. Okay, Tigers, it is time for our surprise local hero assembly. As small feet shuffle down the hall, little do they know it's to honor a surprise hero among them all. We are so very thankful that the student got up and helped this other student and jumped into action in this scary situation. I am now going to call up our own hero, Taylor Snyder. Taylor Snyder, a third grader at Yamhill Carlton Elementary, was enjoying the last day of school before spring break with a popcorn party when all of a sudden he noticed one of his classmates, Scarlett McBee, was choking. I was um, eating popcorn and then when I was finished with it, I was making like a little airbag and then I didn't know there's like still half a popcorn in it and then I actually inhaled like really hard and then um, the popcorn like um, swelled down here. I didn't know it was still, so I got shocked and that's why I got stuck right here. And before the teacher could get up to help, Taylor sprung into action. He um, grabbed me like behind and then he like put his arms like right here. I went up and I pat on her back really. Not so hard, but kind of hard. So she could um, spread it out. And that's exactly what happened. A few thrusts to the back and finally, the popcorn kernel went flying in the air, saving her life. I would say um, thank you um, for doing that because I really have um, a few things I have to do in my life and stuff um, that I'm planning to when I get older. And I'm really grateful. And to thank Taylor for his bravery, an assembly was put together, local first responders in tow, thanking him for his quick actions. Thank you very much. I hope today goes well. Oh, I'm in disbelief. First, I thought it was one of his, you know, come home from school, 
stories and then got the call from the teacher and I was like, whoa. Good job, son. Just beyond disbelief and proud of him. I just want to thank Taylor and his family for being uh, our hero in saving Scarlet. Two groups of younger working women are making work work for them and closing a key gap. Millennials, generally born from 1981 to 1996, and Gen Z's, starting from about 1997, are earning more than male counterparts in 22 cities, according to a new Pew Research study. In the New York and Washington, D.C. areas, millennials and Gen Zers make 102 percent of their male counterparts. Top cities where they outperform strongly are Morgantown, West Virginia, and Barnstable, Massachusetts. In 107 metro areas, they're earning 90 to 99 percent of their counterparts. The CDC is warning of an accelerating mental health crisis among high school students. The new data comes as health officials warn of another spike in COVID cases. Jonathan Sari has more. As the pandemic drags on, younger Americans could be facing a growing mental health crisis. A new survey published by the CDC finds in 2021, more than a third of high school students said their mental health suffered during the pandemic. About 44% said they feel persistently sad or hopeless. The agency attributed the high numbers to young people growing up during a time of isolation, economic turmoil and grief. The Biden administration says it's working to address the crisis. We've invested five and a half billion dollars in programs that support mental health and well-being, including tens of millions for programs that specifically address youth mental health. Public health officials say concerns about mental health were present even before the pandemic. In December, Surgeon General Vivek Murthy issued an advisory calling for swift action to respond to the growing crisis. We've been working already uh, from, from the launch of our advisory uh, with community partners, with parent groups, uh, with uh, other community organizations, including faith uh, organizations. The data come as medical experts warn of another COVID surge within the next few weeks. According to the CDC, the Omicron subvariant BA2 now accounts for about 55 percent of COVID infections in the U.S. But health experts say they do not expect another spike to be as severe as previous surges. It certainly doesn't look like it's going to be anything on the order of what we've seen with prior spikes. The CDC says masks, testing and vaccinations remain the best way to protect yourself against new variants. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. Proof that age is just a number. A 64-year-old woman in Illinois is getting ready to compete in a figure skating championship against women a third of her age. Dane Placco has more on how she's inspiring others to stay active. Cindy Kraus laces up her figure skates, performs some stretching exercises on her 64-year-old legs, then steps onto the ice at the Glacier Ice Arena in Vernon Hills, where she becomes a kid again. This is called a broken leg spin. Five times a week, Kraus comes here to practice with her skating coach as she prepares to compete in the U.S. Adult Figure Skating Championships in Delaware against skaters of all ages, most of them young. So we're standing on the podium and someone will ask me, they'll take a look and be like, oh, how old are you? And then when I tell them, they're like, oh, you're my grandmother's age. Cindy learned to skate as a kid growing up in Edison Park, but quit at 14. She didn't lace up the skates again until she was 47. I decided that I needed something to get me out of bed in the morning, like to really motivate me. So I got a coach and she said, hey, you know, have you ever thought of competing? Since then, Cindy's been a regular finalist at the Adult National Championships, winning once. Tight, 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 squeeze. squeeze. Her coach, a former Olympic figure skater himself, says he's amazed that she's still getting better with age. So Cindy doesn't want to brag on herself. No, I but can't you be. can. Great. What's remarkable about what she's doing? Many, many things. I mean, obviously her age and to achieve what she does at the age that he is is ridiculous, to be honest with you. Crikey, I competed at the highest level. I'm younger than her, and I wouldn't try half what she does. Kraus says she has no plans to retire from competitive figure skating. In fact, she's hoping to win yet another championship with some new moves. I've been working on my double jumps, and um, I have one that's fairly consistent, but I'd really like to get a few more. Cindy turned 65 in May and is retiring from her full-time job. More time for the ice 
which warms her soul. And nothing makes you feel like a rock star like skating does. Um, it's it, There's such a freedom to it. In Vernon Hills, Dane Placco, Fox 32 Chicago. We want to leave you with a smile. The TSA is talking about Bruno, one of their trained canines now celebrating retirement. After more than two and a half years of working as a trained passenger screening canine at the International Airport in Honolulu, Bruno is saying aloha to his working dog years and settling into retirement. The pup celebration included a showering of love and more than 100 squeaky tennis balls from his human co-workers. Bruno's retirement is well-deserved after keeping travelers safe by screening thousands of people and belongings for potential threats. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here next time.